and I'm back. Welcome to Do News. I am your host, King of Do, and I'm going to bring you some news updates, things I found interesting today that I thought you guys would like to know. So, let's get right to it. First things first, Aragon partnered with ENS. Now, if you're not familiar, ENS is essentially uh, where you can go. It's an Ethereum naming system, essentially, and basically, if you want to give your personal address, right, your, um, a custom name, like a URL, uh, you can go there and do that. You can actually bid on it and win. So, for example, if there was a, uh, maybe your name is Mike, and you want to get Mike.eth, you would actually go to ENS and essentially bid on that. And you can actually get your Ethereum address to be Mike.eth, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, with that being said, um, Aragon partnered with them today. And essentially, they bid on company.eth. And uh, what they're going to be doing is allowing companies to basically make an extended version of their address on the Aragon platform. Now, what does that mean? So they gave a great example in the news article. And I have to shamelessly steal the example because it's so well done. Um, basically, if you watch Silicon Valley, you'll enjoy it. Um, because the example that they gave is Huli. So the company Huli, um, on the show, if they were going to use uh, Aragon to create a digital governance and create coins and have a decentralized company, they could basically have uh, Huli.company.eth. Pretty cool, right? You can go further. Um, the next example is, is in the show, there is a uh, technology that Huli is building, and I believe it's called, um, it's not Nexus, let me see if I can find the, Nucleus, there we go, and Nucleus uh, is the project that they're working on, so it's like a sub-department, right? It's kind of like if you work in a big organization, you understand that there's all these divisions and departments, and sometimes they don't even talk to other people, right? Um, I work with Amazon.com a lot, and I go and visit them, and this type of system would work great for Amazon.com because uh, people on one floor don't even talk to the people on the floor below them. So, uh, because it's just... just it's completely different worlds, right? And they have multiple buildings, and it's a company around the world. Well, essentially, um, you can have nucleus.huli.company.eth. What does that allow you to do? That would allow a large organization like Amazon.com to allow governance to happen, uh, digital governance in a decentralized manner, um, within the higher governing body still governing it but essentially allowing some type of digital freedom to be created and exist in each division um, so that each division can in and of itself govern and have its own coin right so here's the best way to put it is like this right amazon has an e-commerce platform that we all know about and we can shop on right um but they have a massive cloud computing side of their business, right? Um, most it doesn't. Most people don't talk about that. The average person never sees that or hears about it. But anyone in IT knows that that's what Amazon's all about. In fact, that's really where they make most of their money. So there's that side of the business that has nothing to do with the other side, really, right? It's completely separate, but under the Amazon umbrella. Other things could be like. Uh, your your fire tv for example that's a whole nother division right still connected by an overarching government uh governance uh a body that an entity jeff bezos hail jeff bezos um all hail jeff bezos um but essentially that's over the top okay 
um, but each division can actually have its own systems and governments. Um, you know, and that would be great. I've been thinking about how that could work at my own company. Uh, many times on this channel, I talk about how I really want a coffee coin so we can all vote on the coffees and let there be governance, uh, bidding and bartering over which type of creamers we get. And I just want good coffee. Somebody help me out there. Someone help me get some good coffee at my work. I need some ideas. Um, <laughs> anyhow, somebody help me. Um, all that, I can't complain. It's free. I can't complain. Um, all that being said, so yeah. Aragon is basically going to build this into their system so it's seamless so that, you know, hey, uh, at my company we have a marketing department, right? And we have a content department or a studio and uh, we have operations and things like that. Each piece can be split up and basically have its own governance. Um, I can create coins for my own team so that they can vote on things and actually create a contract so that they're rewarded for making the right choices and the right decisions. What if I could actually start incentivizing based on performance, right? Uh, using these coins, and these coins can then be used for, um, you know, either services within uh, our own company, or they can be traded out, or they can be cashed out for, you know, fiat is fine maybe even, but just kind of generating this internal community of sorts where those coins actually have value um, because they may have voting value um, and things like that. So. I'm a big fan of it, mostly for small companies for cultural purposes. I believe that companies do a horrible job at trying to create uh, a, a fair cultural system. Um, it's extremely hard, and that's why. Um, no matter how hard you try to preach culture to a, to a company and try to lead it, um, there's always going to be people who just are there for money and they're, they're just there to grind out a day and get on to the next day, right? So sometimes it's really tough um, to get buy-in. And the best way to get buy-in is to um, give people a say. And a lot of people, even at companies where you can have a say and it's encouraged, a lot of people, even though they're free to, um, the way that they were raised, they're not confident in doing so. So uh, having a coin where they can vote anonymously on things that matter to them like I don't know what what are things that annoy you in offices like I don't know maybe the company's thinking about getting everyone standing desks or getting everyone brand new comfortable office chairs right maybe you want to vote on that um, and and let the people decide right uh, maybe you guys have a game arcade room and you're gonna put in a new game you could let people vote on it right and people could maybe choose not to spend their coins on that, as an example, and save it until they actually want to vote on something that matters, right? Um, kind of like giving them more power and uh, over time. If they say nothing over time, eventually they have more power and more say. And, and maybe that's not a perfect system, right? I mean, I'm not here to say that that's the perfect system. Um, there could be abuse, and there could also be people bribing each other for coins and... Um, doing deals to, to help people vote and stuff. Um, I kind of I kind of think that's fun because I think I'd play that game really well, right? <laughs> but um, anyhow, Aragon's doing really, really cool things with ENS, something to keep your eyes peeled about, keep your ears open, because when we see in these downtimes, when the market's taking a dip, when we see action and tangible results, you know, Something that I, uh, I teach my team at work is about belief systems and tangible actions are something that you see with your eyes. And oftentimes uh, you see things that are wrong and not right done in life in and around you, right? And the reason you see those things with your eyes is because there's two things that come before it. Um, right before it are the thoughts, right? The thoughts are going in people's minds before they do the actions. Uh, before that is belief. Belief in something, right? So I often say to my team, when, when, when you see something happening that you know isn't right, there's something wrong with the belief system there. Um, and you got to start with the belief system. Because if you have the right belief, you'll have the right thoughts, you'll have the right actions, right? Today was a good testing ground for whether or not you believe in cryptocurrency or blockchain technology and even which coins, right? If you truly believe in them, your thoughts today would be 
more positive than most. You wouldn't have panicked as much as others, maybe, right? You'd have a, a sound mind and be thinking clearly, even, if you believed in it, right? Because it started with your belief system. It's what you believe, and you think that way. Because of that, if you were thinking that way, you your actions, your tangible proof of actions would have been not panicking and selling, right? Because you truly believe in it. There's some people listening to me where maybe you sold most of your coins and you only hold this one or two, maybe three now, you know? Whereas before you had like 10, but you got out and it's like, well, why did you buy those 10? Just trying to make a quick buck or do you actually believe in them? Something to think about when you guys are investing, right? Uh, today's a good test for, uh, for everyone in the community um, and for many people. Um, they've already been rewarded if they've made the right decision. The markets are coming back up. Um, don't forget, in the news today, Coinbase is a mess. Payment verification is a mess. Uh, so just, just kind of shifting gears here, uh, Coinbase has been having a lot of problems with uh, verifying payments. I'm not sure what's going on, guys. But my, I, if I had to guess, they'd had so many transactions, uh, both normal, um, honest transactions, and probably some not so normal ones, um, that maybe the payment processor flagged them. Like, hey, all of a sudden, you are processing more payments than you should. And you also are getting more fraud than you normally do. I'm only taking a wild stab at it. Maybe you guys will know more about it than me. But all I know is um, lots of people are complaining all over every forum. I was visiting this evening about Coinbase just not being able to verify any transactions. Thus, the price on GDAX is actually slightly lower than it typically is. Um, you can literally sit there and almost see no buying happening is unusual so just something to keep in mind another thing you guys always want to keep in mind is that typically when people move large amounts of money into a market um, using a platform like coinbase they're going to wire it in i think it's very important you guys remember that it takes time for that money to arrive and that there is still more money technically coming into the market essentially there's a whole bunch of bitcoin and ether and litecoin and things like that that are basically just sitting in coinbase vaults right now and that's just something to think about don't forget that that money is still there uh those people may cash out right away uh some of them will hold um we just don't know but that money is still coming in as well however um Coinbase will be, Coinbase essentially takes the money straight out of the exchange, basically instantly, uh, when you do a wire and they set it aside, uh, you know, they ping your bank and confirm the transaction first so they know you have the money, etc. Well, anyhow, I just want you guys to know that that's a, that's a thing and essentially basically all the credit card transactions aren't working. So at the end of the day, GDAX doesn't have the volume it usually does. Things are kind of quirky right now, and there's a lot of people angry right now. Uh, people are angry because they want to buy in on the dip. That's actually why people are angry, because uh, the smart people are like, hello, free money. So um, I apologize if that's you. You know, today's a great day to put some money in. Uh, a lot of people are getting paid at the end of the month. But anyhow, just wanted to put that out there if you weren't aware. Next in the news... Um, I wanted to talk about the um, the big announcement today. So there was all this speculation leading up to today because there was going to be a very large company that's somewhat well known or very well known that was going to be launching a token, and everyone assumed it was going to be an Ethereum token. Okay, um, and rumors were spreading that it was going to be Spotify, um, but that didn't happen. Uh, there's still a belief that Spotify is going to get into the game, um, and there's a lot of reasons why. Uh, but today it was not Spotify. Uh, today it was actually the app Kick. Now about 300 million people use it here in the U.S., mostly kids. 
Um, so if you haven't heard of it before, maybe ask your kid, talk to a kid about it. Uh, maybe they can tell you what it, what's it about. And uh, that's still fascinating to me. Like I told you guys in some of my other videos, I love that the next generation, um, the, all this stuff is just normal to them. You know? Um, here I am making videos on YouTube. And uh, my daughter has been on YouTube since she was like six years old. I, I don't think I, I even touched YouTube until I was like probably in uh, high school. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Uh, it's, it's just normal to them. This is normal life. Uh, crypto, uh, cryptocurrencies, blockchain technologies are going to be normal to them. And that's exciting. But the uh, the Kick app basically um, is going to make their own coin. It's going to be an Ethereum coin. There's not a lot of uh, details on how they're actually going to use it or what the business model is going to be. But just kind of something cool. Um, and maybe that's helping keep the price up today. I think we're going to see more of this. I, I do believe that it, that Spotify will make some type of play uh, eventually. Um, here's something that most of you may have missed in some other news. Um, and maybe you already heard this. But actually at the end of April, um, there's a little company, that, a startup in New York. And uh, they're called Media Chain Labs. Spotify actually absorbed them. And essentially, they're working on a decentralized permanent ledger in order to deal with um, royalties, in order to make sure that they're paying out who they should be paying. Um, basically, Spotify got sued, and it probably cost them more money in negative press than actual cash. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're trying to actually solve that problem. I think that some of, the, some of these forward-thinking companies out there are going to fix that problem. And it's exciting because if Spotify can remove the middlemen, uh, music is going to become exponentially cheaper, um, and the artists are going to be make exponentially more money, right? Um, just take Steemit for example. I love Steemit guys, but like the amount of Steemit and currency real value that I make per video there dwarfs everything else that uh, anything else that's out there. Um, uh, besides your donations, of course. Um, and you guys using the links below, that's fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for that. But um, anyhow, so that's the problem they're trying to solve uh, in the music world. Um, and I just wanted to make you guys aware of that because at some point Spotify could announce, right? They could uh, come out on the Ethereum platform with their own coin. And um, that could be really exciting, right? But who knows? Maybe they're working with NIM. I don't know. I think it's probably probably far-fetched. I mean, I'm just saying. But um, I guess what I'm just saying is I do not have a clue what their plan is. And maybe they're making their own blockchain. Maybe it's centralized. Don't know. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Just something to keep your eyes peeled for. All right. So all that being said, we got one more thing. Um, Pivx blew up today. Finally uh, went back up for the first time in forever. Some big news broke. Basically, they're going to be uh, switching their coin um and basically in the way that it's uh doing its cryptography okay so i want to explain this to you guys because privacy coins are a very important thing they're super important to our space it's very important you understand what they are what they're used for um now i'm sure most of you are uh are correlating it to or have a belief system about these coins oh they're just they're supposed to be used for illegal activity and uh, you know there's no denying that i'm sure that that happens let's be real right but without with all that aside um it does have the potential to protect you and your personal information and that's really powerful um that's kind of the play that pivx wants to do um and pivx is kind of cool um i haven't covered pivx a lot uh, I know that it definitely went through a bubble for a little bit and it deflated and then it was actually a good price But this news kind of got it back on where it should be um, Pivx is a super super long-term play if you're gonna put any money into it, you're gonna be sitting on it for a long long time um, So but because of that you have a lot of time to buy at a good at a good time So maybe when you make some money on a good day, maybe cash a little out and pick up some Pivx you know, that's how I would play it. I'm not going to tell you what you should invest in or how to invest. I'm just saying that my belief is is that Pivx is a long-term play. It's a, it's a little guy, uh, but a, a pretty good one. 
pretty good one to look at. So do your research on PIVX. I know there's some people who love PIVX, but um, until today where we actually see some news rolling out of what they're working on, it's it's been tough to get behind them. There's, it just, there's, there's some feeling there of not a lot of momentum. And hopefully this is the beginning of some more momentum. So um, make sure you guys are doing your homework and your research. You're getting in the forums and um, getting on the Slack and things like that and really trying to evaluate where the momentum is at. Okay, all that being said, essentially PIVX has this concept where they send currency in <clears throat> uh, and it pay basically mixes up your currency with a bunch of others and um, then it spits it out. So it's kind of like a randomized numbers and at the end of the day, um, the, the concept is that if someone were to go on the blockchain and follow your transactions, they would have to take a wild guess as to which one, uh, which transaction is the right one. Um, so it's a guessing game, right? Well, there's this other type of technology, um, and I've talked about it before. It's zero knowledge proof. Um, and essentially that allows, um, that allows someone to basically trust someone else uh, with information or keep a secret. Uh, it basically allows you to keep a secret from me that I don't know about, but for some crazy reason, I actually believe you. Um, I know that you know the answer to a password to open a magic door, essentially. So it's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. I strongly, strongly encourage you after this video, go learn about it. Um, it's really, really important. Um, again, it's called zero knowledge proof. It's a type of crypto um, encryption concept. Uh, go and learn about it because it keeps coming up more and more and more. As I do my research, I keep hearing about it. A lot of coins are really interested in it. It helps. It helps with creating a blockchain that's like truly decentralized. Um, for currency purposes, things like that. So anyhow, go ch go check it out because I could spend time explaining it. I've explained it in detail in a video before and it's just so hard. Um, but there's really, really great content out there that does a way better job than I can. But uh, go learn about zero knowledge proofs because it's going to keep coming up and you're going to see more and more coins trying to uh, implement it. And it's very important. Um, I'd like to think that someday Ethereum has a, a uh, coin built on the platform that achieves this, but I don't know. I really don't know. Anyhow, guys, I am the King of Dew. May the Force be with you. Uh, I appreciate you guys so much. I will talk with you again soon. Have a good night.